On a Thursday in August, I got out of work and we headed down the parkway all the way to the end into Cape May. Now, if you live in New Jersey, a lot of people refer to where they live by their exit on the parkway, and we were going all the way down to where the parkway ends, which is known as Exit Zero. We were making just a quick overnight stop at the Depot Travel Park, which is an RV park in Cape May. It's situated right in the middle of everything, close to the beaches, and most importantly for us, it was less than 15 minutes from the Cape May Lewis Ferry. Hi, sir. How you doing, sir? Good. Yeah. yeah. Just want to pull off from the stones here, and that next brown building up there is the office. I'll check you Oh, cool. There. Okay. We had an early appointment to get on the ferry and head from Cape May down into Delaware and then make the drive down to Assateague National Seashore. We were very excited about this trip, mostly because it was so difficult for us to get reservations. I tried multiple times and it really was challenging because they sell out almost as quickly as they are released over six months ahead. So this is a trip that we've been looking forward to for quite a while. We were at site 108, toward the back, away from some of the bigger rigs. It's a nice little site. The campground was almost full to capacity, but it was still pretty quiet. I actually like those spots. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, we're not by all the giant rigs, yeah, which like is it. nice. Yeah, the bathroom's right there. Yeah. We get settled in pretty quickly, so now there's just a little bit of light left. We're gonna go walk around and check the place out because we have to leave pretty quickly in the morning to go get the ferry. The only sound we could hear around the campground were air conditioners. It was a very hot weekend. It's a neat old airstream. Mm -hmm. The campground has a mixture of full-timers and travelers, and it's very clean and well-maintained, so we would definitely stay here again, especially because the location is so great for downtown Cape May. And the bathrooms. We checked out the bathrooms and showers before going to bed, and although they're not the most modern, everything worked well and the showers were hot and they had good water pressure, so that's always nice. The next morning we had everything ready to go so we could head from the RV park to the Cape May Lewis Ferry Terminal. It was less than a 15 minute drive right on the other side of the canal so that made it very convenient for us to head over there because you do have to get to the ferry early so that they can organize you in the staging area. Hi ma'am. Good morning. Seven? Thank you so much. You too. Once you're in line, somebody will come over and check your RV or check your car. But especially when you have an RV, they want to make sure that your propane is shut off before you get on the ship. Hi, sir. Good, good. Yes, sir. Yep. We've taken the Cape May Lewis Ferry several times. But this was our first time taking the scamp on the ferry. You can take RVs of all sorts of shapes and sizes onto the ferry, which is so neat. And the ferry itself is such a pleasant ride, especially in the summer when the weather is nice. You can go up on the deck, you can walk around, you can get something to eat or drink. It's really better than driving. Did you chop the wheels or anything? No. No? No, they would do it if... Yeah. They needed to, yeah. yeah. Just put the parking brake on. Huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Scans was on a ship. It's weird. Mm -hmm. It's weird that you can just drive onto it, but kind of neat though, and saves us a lot of a lot of driving time instead of going all the way around. A lot yeah. of driving time. So once we're all off of this and going to Assateague, it's only like 50 some minutes to an hour to get to Assateague mm -hmm. in the campground. So it's all worth together. It. Less than two hours of driving. And this always sets off a, a nice trip. You always feel like you're doing something, getting yeah. on the ferry and going over. Especially because last time we did this, it was dark. So <laughs> this is not, and, and it was cold. It was yeah. dark, it was cold. And then COVID was like at its peak. So and we had to like kind of stay in the car. Mm -hmm, they wanted you to stay in the car. So now we can actually like kind of enjoy it, mm -hmm. move around. So, mm -hmm. all right, let's go check it out. It was a perfect day to head up onto the deck and watch the process of the crew getting everything ready to leave Cape May and to keep an eye out for dolphins as we made the crossing Go over to toward Delaware. One of the neat things about the ferry is that it's dog friendly. So there were a lot of dogs walking around on the deck and Red got to go on the ferry last year when we did our trip for New Year's, but it was kind of cold and Red's not a fan of being cold, so he stayed in the car. They lifted the boarding platform that allows the vehicles to drive onto the ferry, and then we were all set to go. The scamp is on the water. We're moving. We're moving. <laughs> so cool. watched those beautiful Cape May beaches go by and we spent some time just soaking up the beautiful morning sun. It really is nice to take the ferry early in the morning. But we were starting to get hungry because we left camp pretty quickly that morning and we hadn't eaten anything. But good thing we had our entire RV on the ship with us so we headed down to the lower deck. We have not eaten breakfast yet, so we're gonna eat breakfast in here while we're on the water, which is just like the coolest thing to me. I don't Thank know. You. I don't know why I'm so excited about that. We're floating. It's so weird. Now you have to keep your propane turned off. You can't do any cooking or anything like that. We just had some cereal and milk, but it was nice to be able to eat and relax in our own space. And it was still strange to me that we were in the scamp in a ferry on the water. The trip takes about an hour and a half and before you know it you look out and you can see Delaware on the other side so we got ready to get off of the ferry. The ferry lands in historic Lewis, Delaware which is a great destination in itself. There's actually a state park right across the street and a lot of people come down here on the ferry just to go shopping and to walk around in Lewis or to go to the local outlets. But we had about an hour drive south 
and over toward the shore to get to Assateague National Seashore. But it's really a very pleasant drive because you get to go through some of the farm country in Delaware. It was a bit tricky navigating downtown Lewis with the scamp, a couple quick turns that were definitely challenging, but once we got through that part it was a good drive on some back roads and then we came to the bridge that brings you over onto Assateague Island. Now we were excited for this trip because this was Patrick's first time at Assateague and it's such a unique experience because we've camped a lot of places but here you are so close to the beach and there are wild horses, which is just an experience that you don't get at very many places. We checked in at the ranger station and then headed to our campsite. There are two main camping areas in the National Seashore. One is the ocean side and the other is the bay side. Now, since it was so hard for me to get reservations at all during the summer, we ended up settling for the bay side. I really wanted to try the ocean side, but those are the hardest sites to get. So we were in Bayside Loop A. We are Loop A, so we're the first loop. And we are Site 11, over in the middle. Bayside Loop A 11. I found it interesting that online it says all the campsites are booked and at the ranger station it says the campgrounds are full. But for most of the time that we were at the campground, it was maybe about half or a little bit more than half full. There were open campsites every single night that we were there. So I think a lot of people book sites and then end up not coming. Maybe because the weather can be rather challenging as we were going to find out on this trip. We came over to the bathrooms to fill up the water because, of course, National Park, so no hookups at the campsite. But uh, we'll have water and we'll put our solar panel out so we'll have some electric. The first challenge was it was very hot and there is no shade anywhere in the campground. That's neat. Didn't take very long. No, that's, well, we saw horses right when we got in. Mm -hmm. We're at the campsite. I think our battery will be charged. Yeah, I think we're good on solar. Thank goodness. Because that fan's going to be going yeah. 24 hours a day. It was in the mid 90s with not a cloud in the sky and a very strong sun. So it was extremely hot and you could see the horses were standing by the bathroom waiting for a little bit of water because they were pretty hot too. We don't have air conditioning in our scamp and up until this trip I never really missed having air conditioning but this was the one day that I kind of thought hmm it would be nice if we could cool off a little bit right now. It's the baby. <laughs> As we were getting the scamp set up, a couple of horses with this adorable baby horse walked over into our campsite. Oh, he's so shaggy. You actually have to be kind of careful before you walk out of your trailer or your tent because you never know when the horses are going to come around. Although the horses have lost their fear of people and obviously they will walk right into your campsite with no problems. You have to be very careful because they are still wild horses. They are not domesticated in any way. They will definitely kick, bite, and try to steal your food if you leave it unattended. So you have to keep a very safe distance. We tried to work around the horses as best we could while we finished setting up the scamp and trying to get settled in our campsite, but they really seemed to like our grass.
We're surrounded. Hey horses, we want to wanna make dinner. There are several groups of horses that roam around the island freely. And this particular group really liked a loop. So we got to see them several times throughout our stay at Assateague, which was great because we loved watching this little foal. He was so funny. It'd be funny if you were having a fire and they came up at night. Mm-hmm. I, I bet you they like sneak up on people okay. sometimes. This one walked around the corner and scared the heck out of me. All right, see you later. We just ate dinner and uh, we're both feeling pretty tired. It felt like it was probably the hottest day of the year to me. The car said it was 97. When we got here, it was like the hottest part of the day. It was pretty much like one o'clock when we checked in, got to the campsite, started setting everything up. And the last thing we were gonna do was put the awning out on the front of the scamp because it was like full sun there's no shade at the campsites because there's just like little shrubby bushes and stuff not really trees and we spent I don't know 45 minutes to an hour searching the scamp for the suction cups that we used to attach the awning to the sides and we could not find it and by then we were both like sweating and tired and hot so we ended up putting the chairs behind the scamp where it was just like a little a little bit of shade like we were just like leaning against this camp to get shade and it was so hot it just like wiped us out so we didn't do anything today we went into town to get popsicles and <laughs> some cold drinks for tomorrow because it's going to be hot again tomorrow but um i think if we get down to the beach you know at a reasonable time we will actually do stuff tomorrow it was just bad timing because it was just so hot but um, it might rain in a little bit, so it's actually beautiful right now. A little bit of a breeze. Mm. There's some clouds coming in. The sun is starting to go down, so it actually feels really nice. I think it'll be good to sleep as long as we have the fan going. Oh, look at all the birds. Got an onshore breeze. It's nice. The bugs aren't bad either. Yeah, it'll I'm feel, shocked. It'll knock them down if it's coming off the ocean. For the first two nights of our stay at Assateague National Seashore, the campsite directly across from us was empty and the campsite on the other side was empty, which is nice because you don't get much privacy. The sun is going down now and we're trying to sit outside because it is much nicer out now. It's really cooled off, but we're using all of our bug management tricks. We've got thermosel. We have the mosquito incense sticks. We have the bug zapper. <laughs> and I sprayed our chairs with bug spray. We just took a shower so I don't want to put bug spray on us. And it's, it's, you know, I guess it's manageable. We'll see. I'll give it a couple minutes. <laughs> see how well our system works. As it got dark, the first of several thunderstorms rolled in, which is a common occurrence on the barrier island. You can get some very severe thunderstorms, especially when it's this hot. And we thought we were doing pretty well with our bug management, but we were about to experience one of the worst nights of sleep we've ever had in the scamp and something that neither one of us have ever experienced. And for that, you'll have to stick around for the next video in our series from Assateague National Seashore. Thanks so much for being here. Well, you worried about you and me, the injustice, the next president to be. The news and watch here your career. It's time for you to face those fears, and it's all fair to be aware and I'll be there. So don't be scared. Just take a deep breath of air. And one, two, three to ten, you begin to focus again. And no time flies. We we'll have enough to realize this.
bigger than the both of us. 